Let's start with Baker. Listen, I always have a say it out loud theory. He's undersized. He he's a little cocky for me. I got a police video. The Big Twelve quarterback history is not great. Uh, he's a four eight five forty guy, so he runs a lot, but he's not like <laughs> not like Lamar, or Michael Vick, or Steve Young, or Brett Favre. I don't love it. What do you see? Yeah, I mean, he's the one thing, like you mentioned just a minute ago, the attitude should be perfect for Cleveland, which is all football. The city's all football. And if everything about this guy that they say he's like Brett Favre, you know, that could be a good spot for him. I'm not sold on the player. Like, I'm just not. And, you know, I've only seen a couple games of him. But he breaks his own pocket. Like, uh, you know, explain that to like, my audience. So what he does, he'll, he'll drop back, sit in the pocket, and people like to say, well, he's like Drew Brees. Well, no, Drew Brees stays in the pocket, delivers a strike, and he's one of the best pocket passers of all time. This guy will break his own pocket trying to make the big play. But, uh, you know, which scares me because he is a four eight five. That's right. So when but, he breaks it, he's not yeah, out running people. Oh, no, he's not going very far in the NFL. <laughs> and, look, the, the comparisons to Manziel, I know they're not – Fair, you know, Johnny had all those problems off the field, but Johnny Manziel could fly. Johnny Manziel was way faster than Baker Mayfield. Johnny Manziel could get outside the pocket, right. so uh, and he put pressure there. So it'll be interesting. I still think uh, Tyrod Taylor will keep this kid on the bench, but uh, you know, shoot, when they're in a weird situation because you've got some really good scouts there, you know, that selected them. And, and a coaching staff kind of in limbo, you know, like, you know, here's the, Rob, here's what I don't like about it, <clears throat> that whoever Baker's going to have a different coaching staff by year two. Right. That's what I think too. Now, I, so, you know, so maybe that, Haley stays, I mean, you know, he's an excellent coach, but it, it'll be interesting because, you know, shoot, I was out of football all last year and I won as many games as they did last year. You know? So <laughs> uh, that's not good. That it, never bodes well. It doesn't. Um, let's go to Josh Rosen. <laughs> I can tell from the fact. I can tell from the look in your think, face, Rob. And, and look, I like this kid. I just think it's the dumbest thing. Ten seconds of of feeling good about it because he, you know, he was sitting there, probably upset that he wasn't being taken. But ten seconds of gratification that you said all that you did is not worth it. I mean, he looks. He's going to look like you know. It's just stupid. Look, Aaron Rodgers is a guy he he loves and and you know he wants to be like. He, he, he was a, uh, supposed to go the first pick in the draft and went 24th. That's Aaron Rodgers. This kid went in the top 10. They traded up to get him. Yeah. And he's going to a good place they, with good veteran players. Uh, you know, it, it's just a mistake on his part. I mean, it's just, you know, it's embarrassing. You know, it's funny, Rob. We always talk about intelligence. You know, it's important. But discipline's important. They say Baker's really smart, but he's not disciplined. Josh is really smart, but would Sam Darnold say that? No, he's more disciplined. I, I tell, I've told a friend this one time. I said, discipline's the most underrated word. You can be the smartest guy in the room, but if you don't show up to work on time because you're out till 3 in the morning, you puncture your brilliance. And so I look at Sam Darnold, and one of my favorite qualities, and this is why I think he works, Rob, in New York, he's very Mark Messier. He's very Eli. Eli talks and never gives you anything. Right. Sam is just... Yes, sir. No, sir. I think he works in New York. Yeah, I think so. And I think uh, he's also in a great situation. You know, when you, you know, he's going to New York with McCowan there, who is a special guy. They're a special family. OK, like to, to tell my audience about this, because people may not know about him and about what he adds to the quarterback room. Right. Well, Josh and, and Luke McCowan have been career backup quarterbacks in the league for 100 years. Uh, and Josh has started also quite a bit, but they're great people, and they will take time to teach you how to be a professional, how to study, how to learn the playbook, how to, how to be a professional off the field. I mean, it's important to them. That's that's like uh, a huge thing for them. They uh, they're special. They're special people. I've, I was fortunate enough to coach with both guys, yeah, and just been so impressed by them. And I think it's it's a uh, luxury. Uh, you know, for Darnold to go there and have him there to mentor him. And look, is he going to take over? Absolutely he's going to. And you know what? McCown will be his biggest fan. That's really an important thing. Yeah. You know, it used to be, Rob, uh, for the audience watching or listening, years ago, Rob, when you got into this league and I was younger, everybody had a third quarterback. And you, in fact, I think you told me this about when I first met you. The third quarterback was a veteran that would teach the young guy how to play. Well, the league now, nobody carries a third. 
So the real loser in that is the rookie quarterback. Because teams right. used to have this 38-year-old, 40-year-old guy, you know, Vince Evans or, sure. or whoever, <laughs> yeah. you know, whoever it was. And he was, you know, kind of a Matt Hasselbeck at the end, like, hey, I'll just help your rookie you drafted. Well, that, that position doesn't exist in the NFL like fullback. To have Josh McCowan to teach Sam Darnold is such a gift. Oh, it's huge. It, it's huge. And, and look, he's going to grow by leaps and bounds of it. Now, he's also got to work on his, on his protecting the football. I mean, that's a, that's a huge thing. It is a real weakness. Yeah, it is. And, and uh, look, there's only been one Dave Craig where every time he get hit in the pocket, he fumbled. Like, <laughs> No I grew thanks. up with Dave yeah. Craig. And so we got fired in Arizona, too. And I mean, you know, so I understand. But that's going to be a big concern. But that is for every every uh, quarterback that comes in the National Football League. I remember Brady working on it like crazy in, in New England. And it's so important. He's going to have to learn that. Then he's also going to have to learn how to, you know, work on his mechanics. He's a young guy. He's only played a couple of years of college football. Yeah. I mean, so I think the Jets did a great job of getting this guy. By the way, the Cowboys go out. Everybody wanted them to take the wide receiver, and I said this earlier. I was in the Chargers room last night. How the fans and the media view receivers isn't how teams. Teams think of wide receivers as I can get them anywhere. But they go out and get a, a linebacker who is a 40-inch vertical, right. has almost an Erlacher mystery. Like nobody's got video on him. It's like one bowl game at Boise. And everybody's knocking the Cowboys, but I'm like, Everybody wanted him to take Johnny Manziel, and they took Zach Martin. Like, I think there is something to be said. I, I, did the, the Cowboys obviously said, we got to get better in our linebacking core. Like, I didn't have a problem with a pick, even though I've never seen the kid play much. Yeah, I mean, I think, obviously, they had this, this guy ranked above, uh, above the receivers, and they took the best player available. Remember, they lost the linebacker in uh, free agency, so they need to make that adjustment. They've had good success with Boise State players. Uh, you know, with uh, Skandrick, with Crawford. Uh, they do a great job of scouting that that small school, that yeah. small area. And, uh, look, this guy's a dynamic athlete. Uh, and then think, there's another guy who's going into a great situation. He's going in with Sean Lee to sit there and help teach this kid. Now, the, weird, the real question is, what defense are they going to run? Are they going to run Tampa's coverage, Tampa 2 with Rod Marinelli, or they got Chris Richard, who's one of the best coaches in football. They added him as a passing game coordinator. Well, he's a Seattle cover three guy. So that'll be an interesting dynamic because this kid is long, fast, just like those Seattle linebackers. Yeah. By the way, um, the one pick early that people said it was a little bit of a need over value, and most teams believe in value. Um, but, but the Niners, they went heavy defense last year. They get their franchise quarterback, and they're like, okay, we got to protect Jimmy Garoppolo. So they go out and they get a tackle from Notre Dame. Now, a lot of people don't think he was the 10th best player available. There were safeties that were higher ranked. Where do you fall on that? If, if I mean, could I make the argument that in this league, Rob, you got to protect your number one asset? Absolutely. Uh, tackle is a huge position in this league, and he was the number one rated tackle. So whether they had other guys up on the board, higher grades, whatever. This is the number one tackle in football, you know, in college coming out in the draft. So oh, yeah. they did a great job. They, they went and got him. Uh, look, they have a six-year plan. This I is, mean, they, this they, is really know, interesting. Right. So they're going to they're gonna take guys like this and bring them up and develop them. And, uh, you know, so that's a great situation for them. And they're looking for long-term success, not just – you know, tomorrow. You know, this is a really interesting thing, folks, if you're listening to Rob. This, I've heard more than one coach and executive say this. They have six-year contracts. Yeah. They don't have to get the star receiver tomorrow. Right. What they need is to build those lines. And linemen take a year or two often to develop. A wide receiver or a corner can come in and play tomorrow. And then the fans love it, and everybody cheers you at the draft room. But this pick to me was like, no, no, no. We got to get a we got to get a tackle, because by the way, look, go look at the Rams last year. Everybody loved all their receivers they got. The key was Whitworth left tackle. Yeah, nobody touched Jared Goff for sixteen weeks. Right, you know, and and that's exactly right. Offensive alignment. If you're going to uh, build a team for for long term success, you have to have both lines. You have to have excellent players on both lines, offense and defense, and that's how you really win. When Rex went to the Jets. They had great linemen on both sides they had a of very the ball. He, he actually inherited a pretty decent O-line. Right. And then, you know, he coached that defense up, you know, remarkably. And they went to two AFC championships in a row. 
Well, that was that was because they had done a nice job, you know, having those linemen there. Rob Bryan, good seeing you. Good seeing you, my friend. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.